Consent reception <laughs> on behalf of, of the bride and groom who got married today. You know what I mean? <laughs> today. Today, I am happy that my daughter is getting. You know what I mean? Getting married. I remember when she when she first came to me. And she said that she wanted to get married. I said, is it, is it someone you know? <laughs> it, it turned out to be someone we all know. <laughs> so he came around to my house, you know what I mean? Uh. And he said, uh, <laughs> I'd like to marry your daughter. I said, uh, have you seen her mother? <laughs> and, uh, he said, I have, but I'd sooner marry your daughter. <laughs> Which she did. Now, I'd like to thank, to thank everybody today who bought a gift. Everybody, except for two, <laughs> who didn't bother their mother. <laughs> bother. <laughs> who didn't bother to buy anything. Uh. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to mention their names. But well, they are the two uh, that got no dinner here today. <laughs> and they weren't on our side of the family either. <laughs> now, today, I would like to just remind you of the wedding gifts that have been received. received. There were 25 ironing boards, <laughs> 17 lampshades, all useless, and uh, an electric toaster that only works, only works in America. <laughs> As I discovered when I plugged it in, and the woman upstairs got the toast out of her. They also got a statue of the child of Prague uh, with the head missing off of it. Uh. And, uh, and some smarter Alec. Some comedian here bought them a pram. <laughs> a baby carriage. And had it delivered to the church. <laughs> <laughs> Marked urgent.
If I find out who he was, I'd like to help him to laugh it off in the intensive care unit. <laughs> in the county hospital. Now, this wedding today is costing me a fortune. And I would like to call upon the chef to come out and face us. <laughs> Today was the first time I saw roast beef glowing in the dark <laughs> and Brussels sprouts in their jacket. <laughs> I thought the chef made a bowl of the cabbage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, they're, they're lively matches anyway. And, uh, well, that's a good match, I'll keep that. I would like to single out the man who is now my son son-in-law. We're related now through drink. <laughs> my daughter could, could have married a man with intelligence. <laughs> she could have married a man with money. With money. <laughs> you listening to me down there? She could have married a man who was working. <laughs> she could have married a man that wasn't working, but was willing to work. <laughs> she could. She could have married a man. She, she could have married a man. <laughs> but look, hang on. I got, I got married, you know. <laughs> the vows are great, aren't they? They're not messing like... Never heard such a list of serious shit called out in my life. You know. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck are we gonna explain that? <laughs> We'll have to edit this in later, right? <laughs> you, out. <laughs> Let's move on then. Let's move on. There's not too long left, so uh, um, in terms of going for piss, just hang on. Right. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. I'm gonna drag the arse out of it now. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I, I think, um, strange things can happen to a man during a marriage, you know. I, I think before a man gets married, he likes to think of himself as wild. You know what I mean? Oh! Sleep anywhere! <laughs> On me hind legs! In the rain at night in the field with me Mickey in the wind like a horse! <laughs> It's amazing what a few years of warm food and central heating will do to you. <laughs> now you get panic attacks if you're left behind in a shopping centre <laughs> that you've never been in before. <laughs> to have to make an announcement over the tannoy. A husband has been found beside the early learning centre. 
Well, the wife that owns him, please come and collect him immediately. I told you you were walking too fast. <laughs> I just slowed down to look at the train and then you were gone. Fair play, fair play, fair play. <laughs> I'd be following her everywhere as well if I was you. <laughs> I wouldn't let her out of me sight for a minute. She's gorgeous, fair play to you. You have to, it's important though to make an effort during marriage. And women are, women, like there's not much difference between a married woman and a special needs assistant. She, <laughs> she, <laughs> You have to be so tolerant and patient and forgiving. Whatever we try, you have to go, you're great. Uh, <laughs> onto your friends going, Jesus, uh, well, he's oh fuck. Anyway, so. So every now and again, a woman will ask you to make an effort or your wife will say to you, this is driving me insane, please. And it won't sound like anything big to you, but you know, it is to her. I have this thing, it sounds kind of horny, but you know, of a soft palate flutter. Oh, but Jesus, he's so, he's lovely. Soft palate flutter. It means, not butterflies in my throat. It means I snore. <laughs> or do I? <laughs> Just an excuse for my wife to fucking hit me <laughs> whenever she wants. You're snoring! I'm reading a book. I'm wide awake reading a book. <laughs> Fuck! Would I be snoring? Yeah, well, you'll probably be doing it later <laughs> when I'm asleep. And even if she gets me later on and wakes me up, like, I'm in the middle of a dream. She's not going to get any sense out of me. You're snoring! It's the elephant's turn to take a penalty. <laughs> get back, Zebra, stop messing, OK? Here we go. What's going on? What's, what that? Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. I tried to sleep. I didn't know. I know. I know. I know. I can't help. I. W <laughs> Fuck, sweetheart. I know. Okay, I'm. Go Time it is, I'm only after waking up. <laughs> I know, I know you have a load of shit to be doing. I know, I know, okay. I'm not doing it on purpose or anything. I'm not grumpy. How, what? <laughs> what? What the fuck makes you think I'm grumpy? <laughs> I'm on, I might be a little bit now, only because you said I was and I fucking. You kind of create the world you want to live in. I just... You made me grumpy by saying I was grumpy. I wasn't grumpy. I'm fucking delighted you woke me up. <laughs> I am, yeah. There's no point in one of us getting a night's rest. We both need to be exhausted in the morning so we know how the other one feels. So I, I bought all this equipment to stop me snoring. I bought it all. I, online, I ticked everything. I said, fucking give it to me. Everything, fucking the whole lot. And I wear it all at the same time. It's like a homemade Hannibal Lecter kit. And when it's all on, it, I have a strip. I have a strip that goes across my nose to open up my nasal passageways. <laughs> I wear a blue rubber mouth guard to stop the air going down my throat and then to stop my jaw from opening and re making the blue rubber mouth guard redundant. I, me, yeah, wear a strap. What? Yeah, a fucking strap that goes around my head like I'm in a Victorian fucking mental hospital. <laughs> and when it's all on, I can't talk. I can't fucking talk. Which is okay. 
except we have small children. And sometimes they wake up in the middle of the night and it'll be my turn to go in and comfort them. <laughs> I roll out of the bed, naked to the waist, a soft horn sticking out of me boxer shorts across the landing into the child. What's wrong with you? What do you mean? What do you mean you can't sleep? There's nothing to be afraid of. Your father is here now, so he is. Will I tell you a story? Once upon a time, there was a man, and he wasn't getting any rest, and he went fucking insane. Is this wrong? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Is it wrong to give your own wife Rohypnol? <laughs> Not for deviant sexual purposes now. It's for a bit of peace and quiet. <laughs> like if there's two matches on a Sunday or something. <laughs> so... <laughs> I like, I like being married. I've got, uh, I've got five children. Yeah. You the man. <laughs> Woo! I'd like more though, do you know? I'd like more kids. Um, I, I want to adopt. I think that'd be nice, you know? Uh, but I only want to adopt talented children. pasty-faced, uncoordinated Irish kids. I can make them myself. <laughs> there was a talent show on in our kids' school recently, and an eight-year-old girl did a tumble onto a mattress. <laughs> At a fucking talent show. A tumble, and I'd say it was touch and go if she was going to make it there for a while or not. She came down with the fucking twack. The sides of the mattress went up like a fajita, and then she wriggled her way out. She stood up, vacuum packed into the fucking leotard. We didn't know where to be looking. She stood up as if she'd won an Olympic medal. And we had to clap! And I was there! What the fuck? <laughs> this is bullshit! We were basically just congratulating gravity... <laughs> ..on its invisible magic. <laughs> then these two adopted Chinese kids got up and they were playing the violin... ..as if their lives <laughs> depended on it. Cos they fucking did. <laughs> They're the kind of kids I want. <laughs> I want to go to orphanages and hold auditions. <laughs> For a new TV show called Who Wants to Be a Tiernan? <laughs> Dance, motherfuckers. It's hard, hard to find time to make love to your wife when you have five children. You know? You can't leave it to last thing at night because you're just... You're too exhausted. You're fucked. You've been up since six in the morning. You're lying there on either side of the bed, looking at each other like a pair of fucking seals. <laughs> <laughs> Two fucking hipless, full of cake Egypts. Because <laughs> you need cake for energy to look after the children, right? You've, you have sexual needs and sexual desires. But you don't have any energy. You're just lying there going, ah, ah, oh, 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 ah, oh, ah. A good time to make love is 11 o'clock in the morning, okay? The three older kids have gone to school. 
The two younger kids are having their mid-morning nap. Daddy, he follows Mammy upstairs in the hope of some loving. The only problem with this is you often end up making love to whatever music is putting the babbles to sleep. But there's no time to change the tune. You gotta go with the flow. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder. Three little kittens have lost their mittens. Don't know where to find them. A oh, mother dear, oh, did you hear? We have lost our mittens. You've lost your mittens, you naughty kittens. You shall have no tea. A oh, mother dear, oh, did you hear? We have found our mittens. You found your mittens, you lovely kittens. Row, row, row your mouth. I'm. <laughs> I'm. I'm getting older now, anyway. Do you know, you be. There's a few things you realise when you hit your 40s, do you know? One of them is that 17-year-old girls no longer want to fuck you. <laughs> they might have to, but they don't want to. <laughs> I'm at the age now, I couldn't be having sex with a 17-year-old anyway because they're on a completely different energy supply source, aren't they? It's completely different. Like, and God bless them, and we're great to live in a world that has them for all their enthusiasm and everything. <laughs> Two 17-year-old girls haven't seen each other for a few days. It's like New Year's Eve <laughs> in a drag queen cocaine-filled prison cell in Mexico. It's like, what <laughs> I wouldn't be having sex with that. <laughs> I wouldn't have the hand-eye coordination. <laughs> Fucking hurt myself. It'd be like trying to fuck a salmon. Where are you? <laughs> I'm at the age now, I would rather fuck a sofa. <laughs> There's no sudden movements. You can have a snooze halfway through if you want. I'm just taking five pairs. Watch whatever you want on telly. Go on. <laughs> this is a fucking gas. Girls probably don't know this, but you know when, when the bra comes off, we're real cool. Never look at the tits. Straighten the eyes. The next move every girl knows, it's up the ear. <laughs> Down the neck. <laughs> will I go left? Will I go fucking right? <laughs> fucking decisions. I play windscreen wipers. This is the most inse insecure part of making love for a fella. Once you go down below chin height, because it bothers us. We can't see your fucking face. We don't know what he's there going. You're supposed to be going, <sighs> but we know you. You're going to be going. <sighs> Then it's down the tummy. <laughs> Keep your fucking noise on her all the time. Because <laughs> you're waiting on the... <laughs> Fuck it, I knew she'd do that. Every girl has... You know when a girl bends? Right at the belly button, every girl has a little crease right across there. That's the giggle line. If you get down past that, you're fucking laughing. I got the little city slickers. 
I nearly fucking died. <laughs> not a fucking hell. <laughs> I swear, I thought she was after turning over and not fucking telling me. <laughs> I got a bit of a start. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I said you're fucking baldy. <laughs> so are you, you little bollocks. <laughs> I said, no, I mean, I mean down there. You're having a hair. Not a, a hair. What? Listen, do you want to ride or do you want to go fucking greyhound racing? <laughs> it was terrible. I haven't been at a party like that in years. Eighteen fucking years. <laughs> to be exact. Our marriage is great. I'd recommend it to anybody. Priests. <laughs> no, marriage is nice. It has its ups and downs. You know, you go through all the different anniversaries. There come different stages in your, in your marriage that you remember. Highlights. I had... Uh... <laughs> and then there's the kids. I oh, know, marriage, marriage is good. We, I, listen, I don't want to see, I'm, I don't like bringing me personal problems to work with me, you know? But fucking, no, listen to this. <laughs> no, fair is fucking fair, you know? We've come to the stage in our marriage, which a lot of people come to, where um, we don't want any more children. And that's allowed. Um, you know, we put, put couples discuss it. You know. <laughs> did she sit in someone's fucking finger, did she? <laughs> extra for that. <laughs> no, you know, he would say, darling, yes, dear, darling, let's talk, let's talk about the family. <laughs> All right, dear. Let's not have any more children. Oh, no more bonky bonky. <laughs> oh, no, we'll bonky bonky, just no more. Ah, 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 don't push till I tell you. That sounds like a good idea. And, and they reach uh, agreement. It's not like that in my house. She fucking decides. <laughs> and tells me. Don't clap on your own, somebody throw you a fucking fish. <laughs> you know, I get informed. Here, midget. <laughs> Front and centre. Don't you come near me with that fucking ferret. <laughs> Unless he has his fucking raincoat on him. <laughs> she wanted me to use the condoms. Use condoms. That sounds like a simple thing. Unless you're 38 years of age and you grew up in an age where sex was taboo. Ta fucking boo. I knew nothing about condoms, and young fellas today know all about them. You know, you see them getting ready for their dates, you know. <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> Stick a condom in that pocket. Stick a condom in that pocket. One in that fucking pocket. One up my arse in case I got a cot with no clothes on. <laughs> I knew fuck all about them. I thought, I didn't, I thought you'd get a prescription from your doctor. I didn't know whether you took it before the meal, after the fucking meal. <laughs> I didn't know it. I, I found out all about them. I found out, first of all, in Dublin, they're not called condoms, they're called Nates. Which is a great name, you know. Can you imagine dancing with some girl and saying, and you, you coming back to my place? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's okay, I have me mates there. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm not into a gangbang. <laughs> and you don't buy them in the chemist. You get them in Dublin, you get them in the Virgin Megastar. <laughs> which I thought was ironic, you know, buying your condoms off a of Virgin. <laughs> you have an airline called Virgin Airlines as well, but I, I wouldn't get on any plane that didn't go all the fucking way. <laughs> yeah, it's called, what's it called? Virgin Airlines. 
Vir I don't know where they got the fucking name from. Virgin. I've seen the fucking hostesses. <laughs> they all have mattresses strapped to their fucking back. <laughs> In case they meet somebody they know. I went in and I got a packet of them and I brought them home, read the instructions, which is something that kids don't have to do now because they know all about them. And a proper order. I had to read the instructions. Now listen, if you get a chance, read the fucking things. Because whoever wrote the instructions for condoms never fucking used them. <laughs> They're in American. The first one is, keep your condoms in the bathroom. <laughs> no fucking problem there. We have a bathroom. Outdoor. <laughs> Second one is, after the foreplay, <laughs> that comes after the three play. <laughs> I'm happy if I can get to the fucking two play. <laughs> Go to the bathroom and remove the condom from its container. Now, that sounds real technical, but it's not. Uh, you, all you need is your fingers and your nails and your teeth. It's fucking horrible. It's like a two-week-old snot. <laughs> uh, fuck. And then it says, then, then slip the condom onto your member. Now. I didn't know you had to be a fucking member. I thought anyone could fucking use them. And slip it on. Slip it on. Did you ever try slipping a condom on? I'm there going... <laughs> Soon as I take my fucking hand off, I go... <laughs> I'm using fucking sellotape and all to try and keep the fuck of the gun. Have an elastic band at the end of it. Me Mickey's torn in black. And, and then it says, then splash some cold water onto your scrotum. I wanted a scrotum. She wanted a fucking microwave. I'm in the kitchen, splashing cold water under the microwave. It's doing fuck all for me. I don't think it's doing much with a fucking microwave either. And, and then it says, then return to the bedroom and complete the sexual act. This is the bit I was fucking waiting on. <laughs> the poor little fucker. Did you ever look at your Mickey in a condom? It's like a little fucking bank robber. Let me out, you bullets! I'm smothered! With one eye! And a big wart on his head! I didn't know what that wart was for. Jerry told me. To put your toe on it to pull it off. Jerry does anyway. I couldn't I use them. I just couldn't. I couldn't. It was horrible. It was like, you know, getting into the bath with Wellington boots on you or something. It felt fucking weird. And, and I said it to her and she went, right, fuck you right, right. Fuck you right. If you won't do something, I will. I said, well, here, you put it on them. <laughs> Not fucking that. Now, this is for the girls. <laughs> and you. If you haven't got this, don't get it. And if you have it, get the fucking thing out. She went and got the IDU, see. The CUID. The coil. I didn't object. I said, if that's what you want, I'll fucking back you up. I brought her down to DC exhaust, got her put in. <laughs> She's up on the ramp for an hour. <laughs> Two fellas in white coats underneath. <laughs> oh, yeah, the back box is fucked on her there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why she's blowing out, you see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say she's fucking noisy, is she? Oh yeah, fucking sure. Yeah, I thought that, yeah, yeah. Oh sure, she's bollocks there, look, look. <laughs> she 
She got the coil in. She only has it in an hour. I'm at home reading the paper. She walks by me. I said, come here, do that again. I said, come here, what? Open your legs. Fuck off. Couldn't be February already. I said, just for a second. <laughs> She's picking up RTE2 and her niggas. <laughs> At night time, we'd be watching television. She crossed her legs. The fucking telly changed channel. <laughs> we couldn't even go fucking shopping with it. Do you know these new checkouts with the lasers and all that? They're all based on fucking magnets. She's there buying sausages one minute. <laughs> Next minute she's her legs around the checkout girl's neck. And it's costing me 300 fucking pounds. <laughs> Got a bit of fun out of it. No time we used to get her to sit in the dustbin lid. We used to get sky movies. <laughs> Then they went and fucking scrambled it. <laughs> but I understand I wanting to do something because everybody needs a break, you know? Especially me. She's very impetuous about sex. Now, sex now. Here, fucking now. I didn't know about this sex. I, mean, I was very innocent, you know? I was listening to me mates and walking to be all saying, oh, I threw my leg over there and I had one leg up in the wild robe and fucking... I'd be going home to her saying, I think, I think Paddy's after getting a fucking Lego set. <laughs> One of the lads brought in a blue movie. I watch you want to fucking see them. <laughs> nah, nah. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. We don't get fucking any of that. I went home and said to her, I said, you know when we're, when we're making love at night? <laughs> yeah. I said, you should get into it. Bit of moan. Mm -hmm. Fuck off. <laughs> I, I, I went that night, I said I'd try it, you know. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, sorry, sorry for waking you up. <laughs> you, ready, you ready to go? Ready to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mo moan, moan. <laughs> Fucking moan, will ya? <laughs> Fuck off, I lose me page. <laughs> I said you could fucking try it, couldn't ya? <laughs> ah, what you want me to fucking do? Moan a bit. <sighs> that ceiling hasn't been painted in four years, the fucking paint's downstairs. You never put the fucking bins out. I'll see you after the break. <laughs> Cheers. God bless you. Well, there you go. Just fix the furniture. <laughs> I fucking wish. <laughs> what did you say, you big prick? It's <laughs> nice. Better than being called the little bollocks. No, I don't mind admitting that I probably have the smallest Mickey in this room. <laughs> and I include the girls in that. <laughs> I'm used to it. I don't fucking worry about it anymore. Well adjusted. Found out years ago. Found out the hard way. <laughs> a girl told me. Found out in the third stage of me puberty. Girls didn't know there was stages to puberty, did you? Ah, ah, there is. The first stage of puberty for a man is that morning you wake up with your very first little horn. <laughs> oh, look, a new toy. 
You don't know what it is, but you know he's never been up this fucking early before. <laughs> you don't know what to do with him. Because nobody gives you lessons. You know, you can't get any book. You know, the A to W of wanking. Have to find out your fucking self. So you don't know what to do, so you're trying to do everything. discovery doesn't take you long to become a fucking expert one hand in your pocket standing at a bus stop excuse me did the bus come no but I did did this bus go all the way no but I do That's the second stage. And then the third stage, the hardest stage of all. That's trying to get a girl to touch it for you. It's dreadful. That's when I found out I had a small one. Lots of my friends used to had some fucking great tricks to get a girl to... A friend of mine took, took a girl to the pictures. And on the way in the door, he bought a packet of crisps. And, and he opened the crisps, and on the way to their seats, he emptied all the crisps out on the floor. And then he sat down beside her. And then he opened the bottom of the bag. Would you like a crisp? I prefer the popcorn. Put your hand in, you might be lucky. I wasn't that clever. I took a girl to the pictures, all right? But I brought her in and I sat down beside her and I... She was looking at the film, I was looking at the film. You know, I'll, He's fucking giving up. Take your time, love, take deep breaths. I like the fella beside you. He looks like the fella that taught you to swim, is he? You can see it in his eyes. <laughs> I swear to God, if I take my finger out, you'll sink. I'm looking at the film, and, and she's looking at the film. <laughs> Patience is everything, you know. Timing is the whole... I said, I won't rush it. I'll wait till the time is right, you know, to introduce the beast. I would have thought the time was right. <laughs> steady, boy, steady. And she was looking at the film like that. And I took her hand. And then, like it was an accident, I just dropped it on my lap. She went like that. No, I only smoke filter tips. Thanks very much. <laughs> Should have seen me trying to put it away in case you tried to fucking light it. <laughs> it was a big shock at the start, but I got used to it. You do. You've no fucking choice. And now I'm well adjusted to it. I don't mind having it. It doesn't matter about having a small one, by the way. I, can st I still do what the big boys do. Still piss the same way. Stand there holding it in four fingers. 
pissing on tree. <laughs> Give it a little shake. That's not just me. Fuck off. Oh, all fellas do that. Well, fellas with small ones. There's a big one, see that. <laughs> That's to get rid of the dribbles. I often wonder how girls get rid of the dribbles. <laughs> All right, let's knock it down, knock it down. I'll tell you a small bit of work done here today. What do you think? Open up the eyes, ears, the whole lot, lads. Sit up straight. Because, well, oh, good man, Ryan, you're back with us again, you are, huh? You're back in the fish of your heads again, huh? Because you got a bad old knockout last week, didn't you, huh? You got a bad old dose, all right, yeah? Huh? You were out for the full week, I believe, is that right, yeah? yeah. God, you're lucky to come out for with your life, aren't you, Ryan, huh? <laughs> you got a bad old dose, all right, yeah? Still all the same, you weren't too bad to play the match in the rain on Wednesday evening, were you, huh? <laughs> You have a note with you for your old sake. I want the word with you. All right, let's knuckle down. Before we start up here today, there's a few things I want to draw to your attention. We seem to have an artist in our midst, sir. Huh? We seem to have a right funny man down there with the buyer. But when I was leaving this school yesterday evening, this is what greeted me on the notice board. Now, lads, you can take a good long look over this for yourselves now. You can take a good long look at that now. <laughs> Because I can assure you one thing, it is the last time you'll ever see the likes of this in the school again, if I ever so much as you acting like that in the wards again to be held to pay for. So you can pass that message out to anyone who isn't in today. There's the two buckles, yeah. There's the two right Larrys below, yeah. My taking buckles, all right, my two prize pupils, huh? <laughs> Wayne, pass that back to the two boys below. Pass that back to them. Pass that back along to the two. Come back with that. Come back, come back, come, come back with that. Come back with that. Give that back up to Ryan. Give that back up to Ryan. Now, Ryan, who did I ask to pass them back? Did I ask half the class? I asked you, isn't that right? So lift yourself up out of that seat fairly lively. Come up here, me. Come up. Come up here, you. Come up. Give them to me there. Give them to me there, Ryan. Now, Tommy, take a stay where you are. Stay where you are. <laughs> Now, Tommy, take a good long look over that for yourself now, Tommy. Now, Willie, have a good long look at that now, Willie. Now, Ryan, in future when I tell you to hop, you hop or I'll hop off you. Do you hear me? Sit down there and give your time show. OK, Tommy, take a good long look over that for yourself now, Tommy. Take a good long look over that there in front of you, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, tell me what's on that there in front of you, Tommy. I can't hear you, Tommy. I can't hear you. What's on it? There's nothing on it. Good man, Tommy. Very observant of you, Tommy. Now, Willie, what's on the one in front of you, Willie? I can't hear you, Willie. I can't hear you. What's on it? Nothing. Good man, Willie. <laughs> because you're well matched the two of you, all right, aren't you? Eh? Two right funny books below, all right. Eh? Can you tell me, Tommy or Willie, what's supposed to be on it? I'll tell you, boys, now there was supposed to be a two-page essay handed in to me yesterday evening, isn't that right? And that's all I got after two of you. Well, I tell you what you two boys can do with yourself there fairly lively. Get your bag, your baggage, the whole shebang, lift yourself up out of there fairly lively. Bring the whole lot with you. Here, Tom, come on. Open out. Down there in front of me, the two of you. Get down there in front of me. Down there in front of me. Ryan and Hayes, up to the back, the two of you. Come on, up, 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 up and out. Up, up and out. Bring your bag and baggage with you. Bring your bag and baggage with you. Up you go. Now, boys, sit yourselves down there, the two Now, I want you under my nose for the rest of the year, do you hear me? <laughs> and when I come back in here tomorrow and the day after, if I ever so much as catch you up the back again, I'll hop after two years, do you hear me? And have that finished, boys, I can guarantee there'll be trouble. OK, lads, knuckle down now. Settle down now, because the holidays are over as far as I'm concerned, do you hear me? I'm going to knuckle down here and try and get a smart bit of work done here today. Take your hand out from your garb and talk with you. <laughs> As I'll tell you this much, lads, I'm coming in here day in, day out. I'm looking down there into the crowd here. I might be looking into a field of tissues. <laughs> and I'll tell you this much, I get as much of a reaction out of them. And lads, I would know who you think you're trying to cut because I can tell you this much, you're not cutting anyone on yourselves at the end of the day. 
I'll be here with another bunch next year. I'll be here with another... No. Lift up your boat. Lift up your boat. Lift up. I want to see you underneath it. Lift it up. Lift out your boat. Lift it out. Lift it out. Lift it out. Lift up your boat. Lift out your boat. There's a summon after dragon shit in our I'm blue in the face, I'm telling you, when you're coming in the pool gates, when you watch where you're walking. You look there like a good man to open the window, let a bit of fresh air in around the face of the wire. You're just walking into it and you're just dragging it in there behind you. Well, you must be the most ignorant bunch I've seen in this school. And I tell you, I've seen a fair share of them down throughout the years. And you just saunter in there with it and dragging it there behind you. As if there's no one to clean up after you. Well, I tell you, I, th 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 there's something good. <laughs> come up here. Come up. Come up. Come up here, you. Come up. Lift yourself up here fairly lively. What did I just ask you to do to well? Open the window. Yeah. Open the window. Yeah. What are you doing sitting down there? Yeah. Okay, I'll open the window. Stay where you are, stay where you are. <laughs> How many years have you stayed back now and you still don't know where the windows are? <laughs> I'll tell you what you can do with yourself now, do I? Is that your coat? Yeah. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Put it on you. Put it on you. Now, I'll tell you what you can do with yourself now, the while. When you get out there and you find the front door, don't stop till you find the front gate. And don't bother coming back here to get me the manners, you hear me? Straight out. And take the smirk off your face, Mori, or I come down there and I'll personally take it off for you. Do you hear me? As you're sitting back there, the crowd here, you're happy out, the big sneery heads on you, not a bother in the world here. And you think you're going to saunter through the year. Well, I'll tell you this much, you've another feckin' thing coming to you. Half of you don't know how you're even going to finish. Of course, Maloney's different, isn't that right, Maloney, eh? Huh? I got you something else, all right, Maloney. I got you a good one, all right, haven't you, huh? I believe you're going out to America, Maloney, is that right? Answer me when I'm talking to Maloney. Is that right? That's right, yeah. You can't even find the school gates and you're going out to America, eh? <laughs> Well, I'm delighted the rest of you find it so amusing. <laughs> because I'll tell you this much, if there's one man down there that has the stuff to do it, it's Maloney. Isn't that right, Maloney? And while the rest of you are sitting back there, happy out with the big sneery heads on you, the one man here that has the stuff to do it, and will go out and do it, is Maloney. Isn't that right, Maloney? That's right. And I'll tell you why. Because he's thick enough. Isn't that right, Maloney? <laughs> you ask Maloney dig a hole, he was up in his Australia. <laughs> and he turned around to fill it in for you. And asked the rest of you, and, and you've uh, smacked that leg answer forever. You wouldn't lift a finger to help yourselves. So I'll tell you this much, Maloney, don't mind the rest of them. Go down there and do it for yourself. Because you have the stuff to do. And don't be stuck here in Glengoolie in about 20 years' time with the rest of them, sitting in our snow and wards and puts the fags together around the ankles and our fat and jackets on and wonder why they're getting chilled, lens. <laughs> Go out there and do it. Because whatever who do Maloney, do not end up like Darcy. Darcy! <laughs> You're the right funny man, Darcy, aren't you? Huh? You're the right funny man, Darcy. But you didn't think I spotted you, though, did you? <laughs> Take your hand down from your guard, Darcy, and I'm down. <laughs> I give you one warning now, Darcy. Take it out, whatever you have, and take it out fairly lively. <laughs> I give you one more warning now, Darcy, and a small bit of advice to go with you. Take it out, whatever you have, take it out fairly lively, and don't make me come down to you. <laughs> You're only drawing it on your set, Darcy. You're only picking it on your set. What have we got? What have we got? Pull it, pull it, pull it out, pull it out. What should we hear, Darcy? What should we hear, Darcy? But the right funny man, Darcy. <laughs> and you'd sit down there, the big happy head, and you'd suck away like it was sucky calf in the corner, Darcy. Wouldn't you, Darcy, huh? <laughs> Theresa, what's the rule in eating sweets in this class, Theresa? <laughs> no sweets. Good girl, Theresa, now. <laughs> Did you hear that, Darcy? <laughs> oh, 
course, there's one rule for Darcy, there's one rule for everyone else. Isn't that right, Darcy, huh? But I'll tell you now, Darcy, I'd have these in safekeeping for you, and you'll get these back at the end of the year in good time. <laughs> but you'll come in here, Darcy, and you'll sit back, you'll sit... <laughs> Jesus, Darcy, you're trying to poison me now. Is that what you're at? Come on, come up in front of me, you. Come over here, you. Come over here. I'm going to get the one thing to sort you out now and sort you out fairly lightly. Come over here, you. Stand there, Darcy. Stand there. I'll get the one thing you understand and sort you out for once and for all. I went to a school uh, in a little village called Ratfarnham in County Dublin. My first day at school, this convent, long winding driveway up to it. One of those gothic doors, great studs in it. I rang the bell and opened. And there's one of these nuns, flapping. <laughs> terrifying, terrifying, three and a half, four years of age, terrifying. What do you want, little boy? My mummy and daddy said, I've got to come here. Yes? Well, if you come here, you've got to be a good little boy. Will you be a good little boy? And I could see past her. And there's a fellow nailed to a cross. <laughs> I thought you're bloody right, I'll be a good little boy. First question they ask, what do you know about God? I don't know anything about God. Who? God! Who's God? God? You do not know who God is? Sister? Sister, we have an atheist here. <laughs> Let me tell you, little boy. God is, God was, and God always will be. <laughs> what? What he is? What is that? <laughs> he is the Father, he is the Son, he is the Holy Ghost. He is three and one. Do you understand? I'm four years of age. Why wouldn't I? The greatest theological question in the world. Three people and one. And I'm naturally, yeah. Where is he? He is here. Well, I can't see him. That doesn't mean because you can't see him that he's not here. It doesn't. He's in the cupboard. He's not in the cupboard. God doesn't go into cupboards. <laughs> he's under the stairs. He's not under the stairs. He's here with us now. He's upstairs. He's downstairs. He's outside. He's inside. He's everywhere. I think he's a big one. <laughs> Michael, I see it. <laughs> I'm asked, do you love him? What? Do you love him? I don't know. I've never seen him. God loves you. Thank you. And he wants your love. Thank you. But if you do not give him your love, he will cast you into everlasting flame. What? <laughs> he will cast you into everlasting flame. Have you ever burnt yourself? I didn't you? I burnt myself on, on the candle. What was it like? I'm oh, very sad. sore. Can you imagine that pain all over your body? That's what will happen to you if you do not love God. What do you think of that? I love him. I love him. <laughs> then I, was, I asked, who was the fellow on the cross? Jesus. Who's Jesus? He's the son of God. I've told you. Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. He's the son of God. Oh. <laughs> he was born on Christmas Day and died on Easter. I didn't think he didn't hang around, did he? <laughs> what happened to him? He died because of you. <laughs> Christ died on the cross because of your sins. When, when was this? It was 2,000 years ago. They can't blame me, I'm only four for Christ. I didn't do nothing. Did he have a daddy? Of course he had a daddy. I've told you he had a daddy. God was his daddy. 
And he had a mummy. Yes, he had a mummy. Mary was his mummy. So God was married to Mary. No, God was not married to Mary. Mary was married to Joseph. Between my parents and the church, the brains are scrambled. <clears throat> I learned to bless myself. First time I learned to bless myself was sadly when my uncle died. And he was being buried in a kind of remote part of the Dublin mountains. And it was a real funereal day. The wind was whipping down and rain. And I'm only this big, and I'm kind of wandering around between these legs and this black shroud and umbrellas and dripping rain, and this bloody hole in the ground. And, oh, Christ, I didn't know what it was all about. And I'm watching the coffin being lowered into the ground, and I hear the priest say, what I think, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and into the hole he goes. <laughs> That's how I blessed myself for years. <laughs> the Father, Son, and into the Holy Ghost. What did you say? The name of the Father, Son, and into the, into the Holy Ghost. He goes into the Holy Ghost. He didn't go into the hole. I was there. I saw him. He went into the hole. 